it's Brittany here at Ingleside Imaginarium and I am coming to you today with a lot of things to show you. In fact, I'm going to split this into two videos so you get twice the fun from me today as far as stitching videos go. Uh, the first video is going to be my Stitch Mania 2019 plans. It's that time of the year, everybody. Um, I think probably once I get these videos done and edited and uploaded, I'm going to settle in with some stitching for the holiday tomorrow. Tomorrow's Easter, by the way. Um, and get to maybe watch other people's mania plans because that's always a fun time of the year. I think whip parades, kind of end of the year review whip parades and mania plans are some of my favorite ones to watch. So we're going to have mania plans in this video and then in the next video will be my normal whip update. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit of history uh, for me and Stitch Mania, the event, is that back in 2015, I had just made my first floss tube video in January, and there were not quite so many of us around back then as there are now. Uh, one of the stitchers that I knew from Floss Tube, which then led to me getting to know him through Facebook, was Coffee Stitcher. I know probably all of you or most of you know about Coffee Stitcher. And uh, he and a friend of his, another stitcher, who unfortunately is not in the community anymore to my knowledge, uh, they created an event for the month of May called Stitch Mania, which is where the group on Facebook Stitch Mania gets its name from. Its first incarnation, and I mean it's only ever been one group, but the reason it was created was for the very first edition of Stitch Mania in 2015. So that event, and sort of the pure version, if you want to call it that, of Stitch Mania, is to start one new project for each of the first 15 days in May. And I remember talking to Garrett, Coffee Stitcher, I was like, oh, I don't know if I have enough projects to even try and start that, or I don't know if I can handle that many projects. But eventually I decided I'm going to do it. Um, and since then, I've created kind of my own method to tackling Stitch Mania, and that is called now, after my old username and my Instagram Instagram name, uh, the Blimey Cat Method. I think Jessie Marie is the one who started calling it that, and uh, so if you hear it around the stitching community, the Blimey Cat Method is a method that I use for Stitch Mania, in which for the first 15 months of, or first 15 days of May, I will work on a project, a different project. Now, what project that is depends if during the year before uh, I had a project that was finished throughout the year, and if it was finished, I can start a new project, but if not, then I have to work on the same project that I worked on for the same day last year. So for example, well, and you'll see probably a lot of the projects that I have, I'm still working on from the very first Stitch Mania in 2015. But for example, if I started a project last year on May 1st and it is not finished, this May 1st, I will continue working on it. If that project was finished during this past year, then that means that I get to start a new project on that day and so on and so forth, you know, hopefully for years to come. <laughs> um, so that is how my Stitch Mania works, and that is uh, how today's going to work with, with the projects. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the projects, what they're supposed to look like when they're finished, what they look like now before Mania, and then after Mania ends, I will get back to you and show off where I got on, on those days during Stitch Mania. So, first 15 days of May means uh, we start with May 1st. Now, May 1st, I am going to be stitching this piece. It is an Ingleside Imaginarium piece called Raptorous Love. Here is what it will look like when it's finished. The idea is these two raptors are forming a heart with their tails, kind of. So that's why it's Raptorous Love. And this is a project that I've been working on for a while. This one I started in 2016. And here is where it is now. So you can see I've started, got a pretty good start on the raptor that's on the 
left when you're looking at it, but on my right here. And uh, yeah, we'll see what I can get done. May 2nd, this is kind of exciting. Uh, and it's kind of cheating, I guess, in a way, but I've decided this project is finished. So May 2nd in 2015, the very first Stitch Mania, I started the epic Pokemon Generation 1 cross stitch. And uh, this is what it should have looked like. And this is where the project is now. If you watch my videos, you'll know that in the last video, I kind of asked your guys' advice, is this finished? And a lot of you said, yes, I think that's finished. And you know what? I think it's finished too. I This is the first nine Pokemon, the starter, some of the most popular ones, and some of the ones you spend the most time with in the game. And, uh, the only ones in the pattern that you can see the full Pokemon. And so I think that this looks very polished and finished, and I think it could make a neat, long and skinny finish, uh, you know, frame it or, or do something with it. So, hooray, this is done. That means that I get to start a new project. And to kind of continue with the Pokemon theme, I'm actually going to be starting a, a smaller, a much smaller Pokemon project. And that is just one Pokemon. It is this Pokemon, Nidoking. So I'll get started on that for May 2nd. How exciting! Now May 3rd, this is a very special project and you've seen it before, I'm sure. Um, this It is from this le leaflet. It is this project up here. Leaflet is called Barnyard Quilts and the project I'm doing is, is the ducks with the two quilts. And this is a country cross stitch booklet, book number 26. Now, the story behind this, and I'm going to tell it every year, just in case there's people out there who haven't heard it yet. Um, I found this booklet and a technically a started project in all of my mom's old crafting stuff. And even found a receipt that showed that the materials and the fabric and the booklet were all purchased from a needlework store back in the 80s before I was born. Um, I was born in 89. So uh, I can't remember the date on the receipt. I think it was like 85, 84 or 85. Um, but this project had been started presumably by my mother and I thought it would be really special to finish it. So here is where I'm at now. You can see here I have one quilt nearly completed, just missing back stitch. Uh, I have down here all the little ducklings done and back stitched, three of the ducks. There's one more duck where this needle minder is, and I have the border of the second quilt done. Now, when I found this, this side of the border of the quilt had been done in just the very tip of this part of the Lone Star quilt. And I think that's pretty special that I'm going to be able to finish a piece that my mom started. So again, barnyard quilts, this is where we're at now. I may stitch this duck down here now that I've stitched in the border out to it because um, it'll go right here and that might be something I can get done in one night for Mania and feel good about so I think that's what I'm going to try and do. Uh, May 4th, and this is a good project for that date, uh, May the 4th is uh, this project. It is the Stitch Line C-3PO Sugar Skull. This is another project that I've been working on for a while. I believe this is one is also from 2016. Um, and this is where I'm at. If you would have followed me on this project, you'll know how much trouble it's given me. And uh, yeah, I have no idea. I don't know if it's the fabric or just the design or the pattern is hard. The pattern doesn't seem hard to read, so I'm not entirely sure what it is. But um, yes, this is where I'm at. Unfortunately, sometimes I look at this and I think I need to UFO it. I noticed that, and I don't know if it's become discolored because of age or if I accidentally used, for example, some Blanc thread instead of the B5200 that I meant to use, but there's sections of this that are a different color. And I don't know if I want to go back in and frog it out just where it's the 
more creamy color and like I said I don't know if it's just discolored because it seems like very small sections of it and kind of random sections of it are a different color so I have to make that decision because I think it would bother me more so than like a little tiny mistake where it's off I think that would bother me more than uh you know, if I were to finish it and hang it on my wall. So we'll see what I, we'll see what happens with that one. Maybe we'll see how mania goes and we'll see what happens with that one. So the next project is for May 5th. This is another one from the original Stitch Mania 2015. I started a Dimensions Gold kit, a petite kit called Mapping Kitten. That's what he'll look like when he's done. So cute. And here is where I'm at on the napping kitten. So I have nearly finished two colors <laughs> in four years. Great. <laughs> um, yes. So it looks like I need to go back and finish the lighter brown that I have going on in here in the body and then add it to this little leg bit down here. And I think that will be definitely a doable goal is to finish that color and hopefully get to start another color this will be very cute but it's not a priority <laughs> i don't mind that it's taken me so long in fact i mean it's going to be a common trend most of these projects are still from the original stitch media and i think it's because most of them are kits and especially right now i'm focusing on my original patterns to stitch them anyway let's continue that was may 5th this is may 6th May 6th is another Dimensions kit called Warm and Fuzzy Kitten. This one was a gift from my sister. So I always think of her when I see it. It's another cutie. I just love when the sun comes in behind a kitten or a cat and you just see all their little fuzzies pop out. Um, this one is on black fabric. And again, maybe that's the reason um, I've had to do a lot of frogging on it as well. But here is where I'm at now. I have very nearly finished one color in four years uh, and have spent a lot of time frogging and you can kind of see here the ghost of the other half of this kitten's face where I had to frog it out. But yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Hopefully I can finish up that color this year, finally. <laughs> For May the 7th, I was able to start a new project last year, so that's pretty exciting. This isn't one that you guys have seen over and over again. Um, it is this dragon right here on the front of the book called Celestial Dragon. It's by Joan Elliott. I've had the materials for this one for a long time, and it's been on my to-stitch list, but I was just able to start it last year. Um, I'm going to see if there's a better photo of it. I believe there should be here. No, it's not any better, but yes. Uh, I was inspired to start this last year because my sister gave me a beautiful piece of fabric for my birthday that she purchased at Reflections Framing and Stitching near Omaha from Julie. And uh, this is, again, not a terribly impressive start, but this is where I'm at now. So that is the bottom of the dragon's wing, the curve of his back going into his tail. Well, the moon is going to come around here, um, but that's his back leg here. And uh, this is on a really cool piece of fabric. It's a uh, 32 count linen in Stardust by Fabrics by Stephanie. Um, and this is the whole piece of fabric. So you can see I'm using the more colorful side for this dragon. I figured, uh, I was trying to think of a project I could stitch on here and I thought it's actually got very similar colors to the Celestial Dragon. So that is who's going on there. I'm excited to get to stitch on that one a little bit more because as you can see I haven't done a whole lot on it yet. This next one for May 8th is another one that's been around a little while. I believe I started this one in 2016 or 17 as well. It's been here around for a couple of years. Um, it is part of a seasonal series from this book called K 
Cats of the World in Cross Stitch by Jane Netley Mayhew. Her nature and animal designs are so good and they stitch up at least I have not finished one yet but every, all of them that I've seen stitch up beautifully and like just the process of stitching them up is really great so this is a series of seasonal patterns um, cats and flowers this one is called summer and it's an exotic short hair and here is where I am at This is a picture, uh, excuse me, a piece of picture of this plus linen and pompous. Um, and here you can see that the two round holes where the cat's eyes are going to be in kind of his muzzle is here. This one I've also had to do some frogging on, so I'm not quite as far as I'd like to be. I just think the series is beautiful and one day, of course, I would like to have stitched all of them. I just love seasonal things too. So that was May 8th. May 9th is another cross-stitch kit going back to 2015. It is this design works kit called Be Joyful. And I've seen it around a, a couple times in the stitching community. I finished one in this series called the Hope Owl. And there are kind of three y'all that look similar. You'll see the third one in this Stitch Mania review as well. So here's where I am. I have the bird all finished stitching and I've started on one of the flowers. Hopefully I can at least finish this flower this year. Um, which, if I have not specified what fabric it's on, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, typically that means it's on the Ada that came with it in the kit. Um, I believe the only one that I did not mention would be my Star Wars piece which is on a 32 count in dusk by picture this plus that's what this one is fairly certain it's dusk may 10th is another ingleside imaginarium design this is called give me some sugar it is the third in a series that i did of kind of like love sayings and food objects the first one was kind of condiments i guess the first one was hey hot stuff which was a bottle of hot sauce Second one was You're My Honey Bear, and it was a honey bottle in the shape of a bear. Both really cute. And then this is Give Me Some Sugar, a sugar bowl. This one was started in 2016, I want to say. And it's done on just a 28 count even weave and mushroom. And this is where I'm at so far. So I've got some handles which are not quite filled in. I think I should for sure be able to fill in those handles and hopefully get a good start on the body of the sugar bowl here. But the spoon and the lid are finished. And May 11th is another dimensions kit. Can you guess what the subject is? If you guessed cats, you're right. This is ebony and ivory. Like I said, by dimensions. This one was also started in 2015. I really like this because it has cats and music in it. And here is where I'm at right now. So I've gotten a pretty decent start on that first cat, the white cat. And because it's dimensions, it includes a lot of half stitches. The two lightest colors, the white and this peachy color, are both half stitches with that you know, like three strands or whatever it asks for. So I think it's coming along really well. You can almost see a cat. It kind of looks like a weirdo owl. It could be an owl <laughs> when you look at it right now because it doesn't have ears yet or front legs. But maybe this year I can fix that. <laughs> and May 12th is something that I don't have to show you. Um, but it was a finish. It was the second time that I had stitched a pattern called Love is the Key by, I want to say, Scissor Tail Designs. And uh, this was the finish. Uh, 
Um, so that means I get a new start this year, and it is another Pokemon. Uh, my friend asked me to stitch two Pokemon for her, and it's going to be Pikachu. And this is the one I'm going to stitch. So that should be fun. It should be quick as well. So hopefully that means with that and the other Pokemon, that's two new starts for me next year. May 13th is this project. I started it in 2016 as well. It's called In the Meadow. It's an adorably sweet pattern with a snowman on it by Country Cottage Needleworks. And I'm using uh, mostly the required threads and fabric. However, I believe that I subbed in a different hand dyed black. Um, and here is where I'm at on this one. This is almost a finish. And part of me wants to try and whip out a finish so I can have another new finish for Mania. Um, which, maybe I'll do that and it'll be a surprise when I go through my Mania progress to say that I finished it. Um, but you can see here I have just the trees and the bottom border to do and he is finished. This is on Scuppernog by Weeks Dye Work in 30 count. I think this pattern is super cute. It is still quite a bit of stitching. But the end is definitely in sight. Uh, I love that one. May 14th is that third kit in the series I was telling you about earlier. This is called Have Faith. It has a quail on it. And this is where I'm at before Stitch Mania this year. You can see I've almost finished the bird. So I think that my goal this year will be to finish the head of the bird and have the bird done. Except for back, stitch back stitching, of course. All of these patterns have quite a bit of back stitching on it. Um, which, it always makes it look really nice, but I'm not necessarily looking forward to it. And then May 15th, the last day of Stitch Mania, this is a project that I started, I want to say, two years ago. 2017. Um, and that is a pattern by Pinky the Pink. It is the Barn Owl Familiar. This is what it will look like when it's finished. And here is where I'm at. I'm stitching this on a 32 count murky. And I almost am up to the head of the owl. But those are all half stitches because it's all one solid block of color and I usually like to do one leg and then go back to the other leg. So I'm not sure how far I'll be able to get, but it's fun to see this one growing. I think they're going to be some really cute little patterns. Um, again, that's by Pinky the Pink. You can buy that set in her Etsy store. Um, there's a set of four owl familiars, all different species. So that is my Stitch Mania for 2019, or at least that's my plans for it. I think the only thing that is subject to change is if for some reason I can get that in the meadow finished. Which maybe I can. I don't know. We'll see. I just have so many things to work on. <laughs> um, but I'm excited, of course, every time I pull out my projects, whether it be for a whip parade or for a sow like this one. I just want to work on all of them. So that'll be fun. It'll be fun. Stitch Mania is always fun. I love watching the progress and I love uh, just seeing which projects people come out, uh, pull out for the, the sale. And, and I also like seeing how people do Stitch Mania because this event is really cool in the fact that, you know, there are vague rules. Just do something that makes you uncomfortable, I think is what it kind of comes down to. But at the same time, if it makes you uncomfortable, you're not pressured to follow through, you know? No, if you don't follow through on your mania plans, nobody cares, um, which is really nice. There, there's no pressure with it. Um, but I can't wait to see all of your plans. I can't wait to see all of your videos and Instagram posts and pictures, just of all of your beautiful stitching. Um, all right, it's good to see you guys, and I will see you for mania. Bye! Thank you.